Hi, my name is Paul Wynn, and I'm currently an undergraduate here at the University of Arizona. I have just finished my second year here, and I'm currently majoring in physiology and minoring in psychology. With this program, I am working under Dr. Stryker's lab, where I'm able to use cell culture to determine the effects of drugs on opioid receptors. So my question here is, what is G-protein and how is it related to opioid receptors? Before we can start, let's give the definition of a G-protein. A G-protein is a guanine protein that activates different signals on different receptors inside a cell. Hey, why don't we think of it this way? Think of it like a multi-switch light switch. If you flick on one switch, you'll get one light bulb to turn on. If you flick on a different switch, a different light bulb is going to turn on. Why opioids are now one of the leading drugs. But how does G-protein and opioids send out these signals? Well, G-protein is able to send out these signals throughout the body by receptors. These receptors are known as G-protein coupling receptors. These coupling receptors create a cascade full of events, and these events will consistently be communicating with the cell. G-protein coupling receptors are the ones that activate the G-protein by working together to signal hormones, neurotransmitters, and other signaling factors. G-protein is very important because this is the process that helps your body fight off cell diseases and infections. The process starts off when the ligand binds to the G-protein coupling receptors. A ligand is a complex that contains a substance that has a biological purpose. The G protein is composed of three components, the alpha G, the beta G, and the gamma G. Now, the GDP is part of the alpha G, but when the G protein gets activated, the GTP is going to replace it, a guanine triphosphate. When this happens, alpha G is going to separate from the beta and gamma G, and it's going to bring in this thing called adenylyl cyclase. This is going to convert ATP to a thing called CAMP as a second messenger. Pretty much, this is going to send different signals to different cells and then it's going to say things like, I need to fight this disease, I need energy, or it needs to say, oh, let's stop everything right now. Sticking with the light switch analogy, the light switch doesn't magically turn on the lights, right? The light switch signals the wires to open and close. When the light switches are on, the flow of electricity has to go through many wires to finally get the lights to shine bright and do whatever it has to do. This is relatable to G-protein. Since we know that opioids work with G-protein, how exactly does it? Opioids have opioid receptors. These opioid receptors are G-protein coupling receptors that uses opioids as ligands. The opioid ligand would bind to the opioid receptor and create numerous signals in the cell that would lead to stuff like inhibiting pain and releasing dopamine. Now that I know some basic knowledge about opioids like morphine, I think my next question is going to be how much morphine is ideal and how long do the effects last until the pain threshold returns back to normal?